Coming up on Mountain News at 6, officials in Lawrence County say they've seen reports of fallen trees today, including one on a home. We'll have a live report with the latest on the weather situation from there. And crews work to put out a major fire in downtown Mount Vernon in Rockcastle County. Plus, a tornado watch will continue through 8 o'clock this evening. Your forecast on the way is Mountain News at 6 starts now. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 6. Another line of severe storms is moving through parts of Kentucky, and we are really concerned right now about a storm in East Tennessee near the Kentucky Tennessee border. For the latest on what to expect this evening, let's check in first with First Alert Meteorologist Cameron Aaron. Cameron. Yes, Steve, we are tracking a tornado warning at this hour for portions of Campbell County, Tennessee, and that is very close to the Kentucky and Tennessee border. Notice for most of us, no weather worries at this hour, but we are tracking some more warnings off to our west, also to our south. This storm has a history of producing a tornado in Scott County, Tennessee, also pushing into the Campbell County, Tennessee area. This is Interstate 75. That tornadic supercell just passed over Interstate 75, and that will continue moving off to the east and northeast as we go over the next little bit. There. And there is your velocity couplet just to the north and west of downtown La Follette. The red, that's wind going away from the radar in Knoxville. Green, that is wind going towards the radar. And you can see there, there is your rotation. And again, that will continue pushing off in the direction of northeastern Campbell County over the next little bit there. If this holds together, this could end up in places like Claiborne County, Whitley County, or Bell County. So please be sure you keep a close eye on this system over the next 30 to 45 minutes as that continues racing off to the north and east about 40 miles per hour. Notice all of us, well, most of us have a tornado watch in place and that will last through 8 o'clock this evening. So the threat for severe weather is not over just yet. As we look back to the west, we are tracking some more severe thunderstorm. Also tornado warnings over western Kentucky, also pushing into northern Kentucky. Now once this last batch of showers and storms moves through our region, the threat, the threat for severe weather will come to a close. But until that, the threat will continue. More details on that threat coming up in just a few minutes. Steve. Cameron, thank you. Lawrence County officials have had their eyes on the radar today, asking the community to stay vigilant. WYMT's Buddy Forbes is live in Louisa, where officials say it's been the best case scenario so far. Buddy. Yes, Steve, here in Lawrence County, first responders say they've been prepared for everything, but they feel pretty lucky for now with only small concerns reported as the weather makes its way through the region. Now in Louisa, fire department has responded to several fallen trees, some of those blocking roadways and at least one on a home. But even with the wild winds and the raging rainfall, no major issues have been reported to the emergency management. Lawrence County Emergency Management Director Travis Hughes says there have been some roofs with damage, including a church and a vacant building that was used to be a pizza hut, but they are happy to say no injuries have been reported. The most important thing, we've had nobody hurt, and that's the most important thing. Uh, just the very um, common things that you see with wind damage. Uh, be prepared, you know, I try to stress that as much as I can um, to stay where they're aware. Uh, have a plan. What is your plan? Where are you going to go to? Um, if the uh, uh, internet power goes out, how are you going to stay weather alert? Now, Hughes says those concerns do not go away just because it looks like the weather has passed. So being weather aware, being aware of your surroundings and listening to the weather reports is really life saving. In Lawrence County, Buddy Forbes, WYMT Mountain News. All right, buddy, thank you. And we want to show you a few photos that we've received from viewers on social media today. Take a look at this image in Flat Gap in Johnson County. You can see a tree falling right on top of someone's truck there. That's from that morning round of storms that did affect parts of the Big Sandy, including Lawrence County, where Buddy just was. Now, here's another photo of more damage. This was taken by a viewer out of Martin County. You can see what looks like part of the top of a roof of a home that's blown onto a car there. Now, here's a look at the current power outage situation in Kentucky. Very easy to see where the worst of the storms were in eastern Kentucky this morning. A bullseye on northeastern Kentucky. You can see there in Lawrence County, nearly a thousand still without power right now. The morning storms really hit the northeastern part of the state hard. There are more than 5,000 people without power in Boyd County. That's, of course, the Ashland area. There are also about 1,600 without power in Carter County. 
and there's also a few without power still in Powell and Menifee counties. Hopefully those numbers will not go up with uh, more storms this evening. Well, the storms also caused several power lines to fall along I-75 this morning. The interstate was even closed for a time around the athens Boonesboro Road exit in the Lexington area. Big mess up there. Traffic was backed up for miles. Several drivers say they did not move for hours. I-75 at the athens Boonesboro exit has since reopened, but officials say you should still be cautious if you have to travel anywhere tonight as the next round of storms move through and as Cameron mentioned ago if you're heading down south on 75 through Tennessee you really want to be careful right now. Earlier today the governor declared a state of emergency due to the severe storms. The governor also announced executive branch state office buildings would close early. Many schools and some businesses did the same as a precaution. Most baseball and softball games were also canceled tonight. Governor Bashir also activated the state's price gouging laws to protect folks from items and services being overpriced due to the storms. And the governor said, quote, we have reports of substantial damage to a number of structures, and thankfully, as of right now, we are not aware of any fatalities. We need all Kentuckians to stay weather aware as we brace for more severe weather throughout the afternoon and evening. And here's some tips to prepare for that next round of severe weather. Officials with Kentucky Power say to keep water handy at all times for cooking and drinking purposes. They say it's also important to have flashlights as well as batteries on hand. A first aid kit and over-the-counter medication is also suggested. And you should have your cell phone fully charged in case the power does go out. You can always stay on top of the severe weather and any alerts by downloading the WYMT weather app. Just scan the QR code there on your screen with your phone's camera. It will take you to where you can download the app. It's absolutely free for both Android and iPhone users. Crews from neighboring towns were called out to help with a major fire in downtown Mount Vernon earlier today. That fire has since been put out. WYMT's Chandler Wilcox is live with the latest on that. Chandler. Thank you, Steve. I'm actually going to step out of the way so you all can kind of see what's going on. Firefighters battled a structure fire here, what you're looking at, in downtown Mount Vernon Tuesday afternoon. No injuries were reported. Crews from several agencies arrived at the scene to help. Mount Vernon Fire Chief Adam Bale says the fire is now contained. He says the fire started early afternoon. A little afternoon today, uh, a Mount Vernon police officer noticed smoke coming from a vacant abandoned building. At that time, we requested fire department personnel respond. Initially, they tried to make uh, an interior attack, but due to the dilapidated nature of the structure, they were unable to. All operations went defensive at that time. Bell says that section, which I'm going to, again going to move out of the way so you all can see, of Main Street will be closed as contractors work to determine the safety of the building. In Rockcastle County, I'm Chandler Wilcox. Steve, we'll go back to you. All right, Chandler, any word on if lightning could be to blame for this? They're still investigating the origin of what happened. There's no official word on that yet. All right, well, good news, nobody was hurt. Sounds like it was an abandoned building down in uh, Mount Vernon. Chandler, appreciate it. Well, coming up, we are tracking this tornado warning for portions of Campbell County, Tennessee, and that could move into portions of Southeast Kentucky over the next 30 to 45 minutes. Those details coming up. Plus, officials of one Eastern Kentucky Fire Department finish up their fire hydrant testing.